Hi everybody, my name is Barry Schwartz and this is the Search Buzz Video Recap. Today is Friday, January 20th, also Inauguration Day. And uh, this is the search news we covered over the past week or so at the Search Engine Roundtable at seroundtable.com. First up, sorry for missing the past two weeks, I was first sick with a pretty bad fever and then I had some type of infection, um, so I didn't really have any voice. Um, I was not even writing that much for the first week, but <coughs> I am back. I have a little bit of a cough, but I should I feel and I am much, much better, so ready to get going. So first up, there seemed to be maybe a small update on January 16th, Martin Luther King Day. Um, there were a lot of people talking about it. There was lots of weather reports that showed those updates. Um, so there were definitely a lot of people talking about it. We have lots of comments. It wasn't massive. It was definitely some type of smaller update, and Google did not confirm it. So if you did see any update around then, definitely take a look at that thread, and you'll learn more about that at Search and Roundtable. Um, Google told us that their in intrusive interstitial mobile penalty is still rolling out, and it's based on their recall. So basically, they have to go ahead and <coughs> crawl the web. And that's what Gary said over here. Let me zoom in so you can see it. So Gary said, we need to recrawl the web, and that takes time for the mobile interstitial to actually fully roll out. Kind of like when they actually went ahead and launched the... Uh, launch the um, penguin penalty and the other different penalties out there. So um, it said, Google is basically saying it takes time for it to roll out. So if you don't see a penalty yet, um, that might be why. But some people don't believe them. So far, <coughs> the mobile interstitial, interstitial mobile penalty, Google mobile penalty, had very, very little impact. Um, Glenn Gabe has been tracking it. He has over 60 sites he's tracking that have these in, annoying interstitials that are live up on the website. And they aren't hit. Only a few sites that he noticed that got hit and they got hit pretty hard, but the, most of the sites he's been tracking did not get hit, and most of them actually were recrawled, and the cache is updated, and you can see the crawl data has been updated as well. So it's hard to say. We asked Google what's going on. They did not respond to us, um, so it's kind of interesting. Maybe they're still tweaking it. Maybe they're still working on it. We will see. But when a site does get hit, it gets hit hard. Um, some sites got hit, dropped by 10 points in the mobile results. Some sites got to page three, page four, from page one. So it definitely does get hurt, does hurt when you actually get hit by this. The question is, when are the sites that should get hit by this get hit by this? And we're not really sure. Google said the mobile first index is not launching any really time soon. It's gonna happen, um, who knows when, but sometime in 2017. And it looks like they're far off from actually launching this mobile first index. <coughs> John said, I don't have any dates. I would guess later this year sometime. Later this year could be the end of 2017. It's hard to say for sure, uh, but the mobile first index is definitely not live yet, and it doesn't look like it's going live anytime soon. Google has confirmed finally that the link operator, link colon www.site.com, no longer works. It has completely dead. It's irrelevant. John Mueller said things changed over time. That's no longer live in search, he said, meaning the link operator. And I also confirmed it with Google directly, and Google told us, that it no longer works. It's completely dead. It might bring up results, but those results are completely irrelevant and they do not work anymore. So stop using the link operator and use other tools to find your links. Google came out with a blog post which they promised around crawl budget and what it means. And basically it means is that crawl rate and crawl demand equals crawl budget. Um, and I go through it in more detail. Gary from Google did a really nice blog post on the Webmaster blog and Jennifer Slegg did a great blog post on her uh, blog, the SEM post. <coughs> going through the crawl budget and so forth. Um, I'm not gonna go through it in detail now, but if you are, if you do have large sites, definitely worth looking at how crawl budget works. So you can go ahead and uh, you know make it a little bit easier for Google to crawl the pages that you want on that large site. Google said when you should use the nofollow at link attribute when linking to bad sites. People say, why do you link to bad sites? Well, I have to link to bad sites to show you examples of bad sites and what they're doing. And sometimes, rarely do I use a nofollow only if the site's really bad and when I have like a bad gut feeling about linking to a site, I will use a nofollow. And Gary said, sometimes it makes perfect sense to use nofollow writing about a bad site. Don't help them with your reputation. And then he shows a picture of Fred, which is his fish that he took a picture of when he went diving. So definitely use a nofollow. Gary also said that using the international targeting feature in Google Search Console for setting a specific country will not hurt your visibility, reduce your visibility, um, in other countries, which I find to be wrong. <laughs> I don't think that seems to be true. So if I go ahead and say this website's targeted to Israel, that's not going to impact how I rank in the US or in the UK or in Germany or different other countries. Seems wrong, but what do I know? 
Um, Google has a new shopping ad format in the Google Local Pack. So if you do a search for engagement rings in Buffalo, let me zoom in so you can see this. Very interesting. So here's the Local Pack. And usually you see stores that sell it, but here you're seeing shopping results in stores that you can pick it up at. So Kohl's sells it, and you can actually click on it, and it takes you directly to Google Shopping, where you can actually go ahead and buy it online or pick up in the store. Um, this was spotted by Mike Blumenfeld. Pretty interesting. Um, and it's kind of a little bit shocking. Didn't expect that from Google. Google AdWords is going to only allow you to add and edit extended tech, um, your ads um, using standard text ad format up until January 31st. After that, you, you have to start using and fully use the extended text ads format. You no longer be able to use the standard text ad format starting January 31st. Bing Ads launched a new extension, ad extension scheduling feature. So if you want to schedule extend ad extensions to show up and show and turn off and off and on and off, you could do that using the new scheduling tool. So that works for most of their extensions. Um, Google is testing in the Google My Business Center a way for you to build a very quick and dirty website for your business. That's one of the biggest issues for Google is they need more businesses to have websites so they can link to websites and send traffic to websites and get more ads and advertisers. Google AdSense launched an ad um, balance slider. So basically, if you want to show less ads on your website, you can use it. So this is what it looks like. Let me zoom in. Um, so you get this slider thing, which if you want to adjust, you could drag it down. So I dragged it down to about 60% of ad showing, which says you'll still earn 90% of your earnings because it's going to show the best type of ads, which is a cool feature. Um, you don't have to show 100% of the ads all the time to earn 90% of your income. Um, Google Android app has launched a new feature that allows you to go ahead and uh, search offline. So if you are on a bad internet connection, you do a search. What's going to happen is, let me see if this loads for you and show it to you. You do a search over here, as you can see. Um, you do a search for weather. It will go ahead and notify you that <clears throat> there is no internet connection. It's going to say, we'll keep trying until we get that internet connection. And then what's going to happen is, um, when it gets the internet connection, it's going to go ahead and say, hey, do you want to see the results now? It'll show you a notification. See, offline, no internet connection. It gets the internet connection. Click on it, and it brings up the results once it gets the internet connection, which is a nice little feature. Um, finally, Matt Cutts, Google's former Google search quality czar, has officially resigned from Google. Um, he, his last date was on December 31st of last year. He announced it just yesterday or two days ago. And he said he's joining fully the USDS team, the United States Digital uh, uh, Services team, where he basically worked, started, started working there on a temporary basis while I'll leave at Google about six months ago. He extended that for another three months. Um, and then he decided to go work there as long as possible, as long as Trump, I guess, allows him to work there. Um, he is now the new director of engineering at the USDS because the previous director had to step down with um, Obama going out. <coughs> so he's the interim for now, and we'll see if, if he, it lasts. Um, as you know, um, Matt Cutts left or went on leave with Google uh, about two years ago or so. Um, and then sometime in, I think, mid-2016, he decided to do the USDS, and he's staying there. He left Google. He's working on big data problems and access accessibility problems for the government, which is a good thing and it's really great to see. Any event, thanks so much for listening to the Search Buzz video recap. Again, I'm sorry for not doing it for the past two weeks. Um, I tried to include some news that I missed that was important over the past two weeks. And any event, um, thanks so much for listening. Again, today is Friday, January 20th. Everyone have a great weekend and I'll see you guys next. Bye.